Hey guys, it's Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we priced tone coins. It's a very interesting, touchy, and hard subject to kind of wrap your mind around. Um, but we're going to try to do our best to answer that question in this video, so stay tuned and enjoy. So to start from the top, if you guys missed our video about how to price coins without toning, uh, please check out that one down below. This video is going to be building on top of that. Um, and basically what we discussed in that video was gray sheet, price guide, eBay comps, and your knowledge of the space. All of those really come in, into fold when you're pricing a certain coin without toning. But the kind of the extra things that we use to price toning uh, with the coin in its current condition is two websites in particular. The web first website is called Great Collections. Great Collections uh, sells and auctions off some of the finest toned Morgan dollars, commemoratives, peace dollars, you name it. They have a lot of uh, different things that they sell, but a lot of them are toners. And what's important about that website is that they offer auction archives on every single thing they've sold. So some of these coins, if they've ever been on, on uh, Great Collections, I can go back 10 years, maybe even further, to see if they sold and what they sold for. Another website that we use is monstertonemortgage.com. Why do we use that? So we can uh, study uh, what are the rare color progressions, what are color progressions to look out for, um, and there's many more that we're going to discuss in a certain part of this video. Uh, but right now we're going to cut to the part where we're going to be talking about color progressions and what to look out for and monster tone mortgage in general. We're going to take just some time out of this video to show you that website, show you what they have to offer in terms of knowledge. Um, it's going to be an interesting part of this video, so enjoy. So right here is the key website you guys are going to, want to look for. This is monstertomorans.com. We're going to click on All About Morgans. And as you guys can see, everything that you guys really want to know about uh, Morgans and their toning, uh, values, different color progressions, all that type of stuff. Let's click on one of these here, though. It's going to drop us down to different types of color progressions as you can see. We've got crescents, we got textile tone, we got a lot of different things that will really help you guys out. Double sided toners we talked about um, and we also have a few crescents, um, you know, a lot of different types that you guys can look at on monstertonemorgans.com. Um, you guys would be very impressed with all that but if we take a look back at the top here, um, we're going to actually take a look at um, you know, just the things that you should look out for when you're trying to look at Morgans, trying to understand them. What's the things that really stick out to a collector and uh, a dealer? And a lot of these you'll see based on the, uh, just the condition of them. Do they have a nice kind of cartwheel to them? Are they proof-like, bowl luster? All that's very important. And, uh, you know, we're talking about textile in this video. We're talking about uh, haze. We're also going to be talking about a few other things just based on the examples we have to share with you. Um, what's special and unique about the coin? We also have something like that. This is one of my favorite coins that I've ever seen. This is uh, basically a South Dakota bank bag. The H on the coin basically came from the outside of a canvas bag. We'll be talking about textile tone coins in this video though, but definitely one of my favorites. Um, as we scroll down a little bit more, we'll be talking about the date. Dates are rare to find with toning. Some of them are. Um, and also talking about the holder. The holder is very important when you're taking a look at toned examples, will really increase the value just because many of them weren't put in rattler holders back then. So a lot of different things for you guys to see. I hope you guys enjoy this website. So now that you guys saw a brief overview of monstertonemorgans.com, I encourage you to go check out their website. Um, do research for yourself because it'll be more valuable than just watching this video alone. You cannot price tone coins by just watching this video. And that's what I'm prefacing to begin with. Uh, to answer another question, um, toning is damage. Uh, if anyone says that or if they have that opinion, um, yes, it's considered tarnishing, um, but there is a market value for the coin. People are willing to pay more money for beautifully toned coins than they are beautifully blast white coins. It's just something that's understood in the hobby and the market is speaking for itself. And so that opinion comes up a lot, but just understand that from the get-go, uh, beautifully toned coins are going to be much more expensive, uh, just depending on their progression, uh, the holder that they're in, if they're CAC approved, a lot of things like that we just discussed. But let's take some time, talk about the certain coins that we have in our collection, 
why we have them, and the things to look out for with certain coins. So we have a whole span of coins for you guys to look at today, but let's start off on the bottom row. This one is an 1881S Morgan dollar. And for many people, like, I, like I, I'm trying to say, that they would say, oh, these are kind of in the same ballpark in terms of value. And what I would say is false. And the way I would say that is just based on the market and what they would be willing to pay. And we'll be talking a little bit more about comps at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. This one is an 1881S Morgan dollar, an MS64 by uh, PCGS. Does have really nice luster. Everything about the coin is really beautiful. Nice San Francisco mint coin, and it is CAC approved. And that's something, you know, that'll demand, you know, $125. Just what you can expect from price guide and current comps of older holders. But when we take a look at this Morgan in this kind of special holder, as you guys were seeing on the website, uh, they, they talk about having coins in older holders that are special, that are unique. And something that's special and unique is this coin because not only is it proof-like and CAC approved, but it also is beautifully toned. And I think that makes it special is that it's toned in there and it is a finite holder. So basically they only made uh, PCGS rattlers from 1986 to 1989. And what's interesting to understand about that is that most people at the time thought toning was ugly and it didn't demand any premium and it's just known as damage. And partially that's true. But over the past few years, toning has really picked up. People really think that it adds, uh, you know, adds kind of an interesting perspective to the space and they're now willing to pay a large premium for coins like this and it's you know it's been very interesting how everything evolves but I don't really know how I would kind of phrase this in terms of uh, you know its color progression uh, I don't think it's like a cat eye but I do think it's just a full spectrum on the obverse here but let me take a look at this next rattler and the reason why we collect these is because they're just very interesting and hard to find in rattlers with with nice toning and so when you take a look at this coin it has a pretty nice rainbow on the obverse here, almost like a crescent. And that's, you know, ones that you normally see on Morgan Dollars that have toning. And what you're going to see with all of these coins is that they're all very beautifully toned. And that's something that you want to take a look at, especially if you're buying for a client or for your collection. The things that will go up the most, and this really isn't an investing channel, but things that will go up the most are the ones that will relay and connect with other people. So when someone sees this coin, they go, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I wish I could have it. And that's something that you should have and understand about any coin in your collection, if it's gold, toning, or just a rare coin in general. But taking a look at this Morgan, we also have, you know, just the rarity of the holder. Um, you know, most of the time you don't find 1888s that tone very well, but when you can find them with this much eye appeal, this much color, um, and the luster that's still intact, that's something that you really want, especially if you find it in a Rattler holder. Most people that you know, asked us about these these coins and want to know what we uh, were offered for them. We had someone, I think, offer us $900 for this coin. And, you know, in 1888 and MS63, even with the gold CAC, say it upgraded to a 65, what, that's a $250 coin? So understanding the rattler, understanding the toning, all these things are so multidimensional um, for your knowledge and understanding of the space, and that will really help you in the long run when collecting tone coins. But... Now that we talked about coins that are in older holders that are a little bit more finite, something that you should be keeping an eye out for, now we're going to be talking about coins that just are hard to find toned, just based on uh, what they are. This one is uh, a 1935 Denver Buffalo Nickel. It has some really nice rainbow rim toning. Uh, you know, it's just a stunning piece. Don't find too many like this that often. And that's kind of why I set it aside. And uh, the reason why we're talking about these, like I said, is because you can't find many of these with toning just based on the content of the coin. So many of these, when you look at them, most of them are going to be silver, uh, silver based. And what happens with that is that it's more easily to be tarnished and toned um, just based on their metal content. And this one is all, it doesn't have any silver in it. And so understanding that from the get-go is pretty hard, is pretty interesting. Um, and so that's kind of why I set this one aside. And that's why it actually demands a premium because when someone's looking for a tone buffalo uh, of that caliber, they're going to have to pay for it. There's not very many out there for you to pick up. And when you take a look at coins like this, which is a 1925 Stone Mountain, a lot of commemoratives are, uh, you know, they don't have this much toning on them. 
And you know, when you're when you're going to buy a toned commemorative, you kind of want one that's intensely toned and that is kind of the best for uh, the series. Now, when talking about price, um, I'm going to be completely honest since I'm keeping this coin. I think I paid $850 for this coin, and it's only about a $100 coin if it was blast white. And so I had to pay up for a certain toning like this just because finding another one like this with this color um, is very hard to find. And I really haven't ever seen another Stone Mountain like it with that beautiful toning on it. Unless it was a super high grade that sold for, you know, probably five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And so going along with the same trend there, this is a 1925S California commemorative. The reason why I picked this one up and I'm keeping it is because... Once again, the toning on this coin is very hard to find. If you look through all the PCGS trivies that they have up, and most of the sold comps that are out there, you're not going to find a toned uh, Cali like this one. And it's just because they're, they're pretty hard to find toned, I think there's only 21,000 in existence based on the initial uh, 50,000 rollout. And so... When I find a coin like this, when it's in this holder, um, you know, just, just stuff like that I really look out for. Understand the space of how rare coins are like this to find. Are you guys enjoying the video so far? If you guys are, please leave a like. Uh, we really do appreciate that. And comment your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of toning in general? Do you guys think it should demand a premium? And if so, what do you think of it? Like, you know, it's, it's kind of a part of the hobby. Um, and also subscribe if you're new. We would really appreciate that. We would like to see you here every single upload, just checking out what we have and uh, enjoying the new knowledge that we're trying to give you guys. But let's get back to today's video. And so there's something else that I want to talk to you guys about as well. This one's interesting just because 1889s are pretty hard to find toned like this. And the reason why I bought this coin is because this one is known as an end of roll toner. And end of roll toner basically means this one sat at the end of a bankroll. And what they did was they folded over the paper, as you can see here. And where the paper wasn't, it toned almost terminal, as you can see. And the reason why I bought this one, one is because the date is pretty hard to find toned, and it's very uniquely toned. As you can see, um, you know, the, the definitions of the lines are very intense. And that's something that you actually just don't see every day with any end of roll toner. Uh, most of them are going to be kind of faint, or some have only a few lines. This one is very distinct in the center of the coin. Someone folded this one pretty interesting, in an interesting way. And so that's something that really drew, drew me to the coin, and that's something that made me pick it up. This one's known as the Crown Jewel because this is the one that really got me into buying and selling. And I really wanted to find this coin when I started looking uh, for coins, and it took me a few months, but I finally got it. Let's talk about these Kennedys here. Uh, Kennedys are pretty easy to find toned, but as you can see, it has kind of that money color to it. And what money color basically suggests is that um, people are willing to pay money for a certain type of look. This one has that look because it has that green, pink, and gold. And the coin is just very vibrant from the start. And so when we actually compare this to a regular kind of Kennedy, you're, you know, you're paying an MS64 grade, you're probably paying $20 for a Kennedy like this. But since it's interestingly toned and is unique, that's something that really comes into play when you're taking a look at it. And like I said, we're gonna be talking about comps at the end of this video. And something that you also have to understand with color progression is that basically with color progression is it's constantly going on a continuous scale. So, so these would have to be pulled out at a certain time in history so that all this toning would remain intact. If all these were still in their current place, uh, in the world and not encapsulated and preserved, a lot of them would look dark, terminal, and none of these amazing colors would be on these coins. But let's take a look at this other Kennedy. We talked about an obverse tone coin, and obverse tone coins mainly have a lot more value just because that's what many, most of the collectors will pay a premium for. But there also are reverse tone coins with nice color as well. We're going to be showing a few more off in this video. This is a 1964 Kennedy half dollar. It is 90% silver, and it has a really nice terminal rainbow on the reverse here. Kind of like a bubble on the coin as well, but I purchased this coin because it did have that beautiful eye appeal to it, and I just don't see many Kennedys that have really nice toning. 
kind of that money color that we were talking about earlier. It really sometimes just demands a higher premium and it gives that intricacy to a coin. That's something when you're selling a tone coin and it's beautiful and something that you would keep for your collection if you weren't running a business or you know you wanted to save up for a different coin. And sometimes that's just an easier sell just because it is a uh, you know a more of a unique coin that many people relate with and it's just not like every other Kennedy that you see. Now let's show you guys one that's really intense, one that will really demand a premium just based on its color. And not, not based on the holder or anything else, but if we did have it in an older holder, um, that would be pretty awesome too. This is a Commodate Morgan Dollar rated MS62 by uh, PCGS, and as you can see, the luster is beaming off the coin, but it really also has some deep blues, greens, golds, um, kind of a, a pink, and then a really nice St. Patrick's Day green. Um, you know, kind of like a green goblin here, but the coin like this with this, you know, dramatic toning and, you know, it just really pops off the coin. This one's very expensive and it's really hard to find like this. And so, like I said, study your, study, uh, the website for kind of toning patterns you should look out for. And, uh, the, the comps that we'll show you at the end of this video really help as well. And we're, we're going back to coins that you don't see too often with toning. Here is a 1922 Denver Peace Dollar. Many of these to prevent toning uh, were put in plastic bags instead of canvas bags. Um, they saw that as a problem back then. And so when you take a look at this coin, this coin has toning on both sides. And I just don't see many Peace Dollars like this. If you guys have ever seen a Peace Dollar like this at a show, it's, it was probably very expensive or you know um, someone else picked it up before you did. And you know we had to collect this coin just because like we said there's not too many like it and if we're going to collect a peace dollar why not collect one that's really beautiful just like that one and we're going to keep talking a little bit about these two coins here many people think you know not having intense toning is you know uh, something that you shouldn't worry about but it really does play a role in in the coin and then not only does that but also the date so just imagine if this 1900 o over cc had the toning of this 1887. That alone would be pretty interesting just because how many of that of the 1900 over CCs out there have that intensive toning? And so having the right date for the coin, I know many of these are common dates, but having a date like this, uh, especially with beautiful toning, is gonna be very hard to find because uh, the 1900 O, only 10% uh, of them were O over CCs. And so very few mintage, very out, very few out there, and finding one with a lot of toning is going to demand that premium. But if we take a look at this coin in particular, it does have kind of like a rose look to it, uh, kind of a rosy red, a little bit of pink to it, but nothing that I would say would demand an exuberant premium. And so understanding that, um, just know that buying a coin with kind of a little bit of color sometimes just doesn't demand, demand that premium. And sometimes it could take away from the premium of a coin just because it might not be the most attractive. It might have ugly toning instead of beautiful toning. But let's move up to the top row here, uh, kind of talking about different patterns with coins. This one is an 1887 Morgan Dollar graded MS64 by PCGS. The reason why I'm sharing this one off today is because it has a tape tone uh, toning pattern on the obverse here. And basically the way someone held their coin in an album um, was with tape and so they would just tape over the obverse here and once someone actually pulled it out of that album it had a really nice toning around uh, you know the top of the head and under the neck there and it had some nice toning on the reverse as well and so most likely this one was held in an album with tape and people find that interesting a part of numismatic history and so once again that's going to play into the role of the value that's going to be playing into the role of how many are out there and do they look like that and so we're going to take a look at this coin, another reverse toner here. This one looks a little bit similar. Was it held in with tape or something interesting like that? And then the tape kind of came off over time. It does have that kind of, uh, you know, almost line here that you can see. But finding a reverse toner like this, especially with kind of its interesting and unique uh, toning pattern, you can kind of see a streak here, almost an L here, and the, a little bit of the color bleeding in. Um, just something that I don't see every day and something that we thought would be cool to set back. Um, here's another one that I wanted to show you guys as well. We were looking at a website. They do have a lot of textile 
toned um, examples. This one is textile tone, as you can see, kind of in the hair there. It's kind of like a little, it's, it's spotty, and you can also see it on the face. Very faint. Would like to get a true view of this coin, but we'll show you a better textile uh, one in the, in the minute. But this one, with this beautiful color, uh, a lot of these were held in canvas bags, like we were talking about earlier. And, and when understanding that, know that when the, to when the toning actually happened to the coin, um, a lot of the toning kind of pierced through the bag and were all, that were actually imprinted onto these coins. And so finding ones with textile uh, does give it, like I said, a piece of numismatic history, something that you don't see every single day. And like I said, this color on this coin is very unique. Don't see many like this. It's kind of like a blueberry with a little bit of orange. And that's kind of a hard color to find. So once again, if you study color progressions and understand that, you'll know that a color like that is just not easy to see. Here's another textile kind of look to a coin. As you can see right underneath the left wing there. Um, and it has kind of an interesting toning pattern. Almost like a, a triangle. But we picked up this coin because we really did enjoy kind of that unique pattern. And it is another estimate coin. Does have that very strong luster. Is CAC approved. And just things that jump out to us that are very unique. We really like to share those. And if we want to share one more textile coin, we actually sold this coin um, a little bit a while ago, and we really do miss it. It was actually textile toned in four different directions. And so that's something, like I said, you don't see every day and did demand a premium. Here's the last tone coin we want to show you in this video. This is what I would call the horseshoe. And basically, it looks like it was toned on the obverse in a horseshoe kind of fashion. This one is going to be unavailable on our website acousticcollectibles.com if you guys are interested in picking it up. The reason why I bought this coin is not only does it have the interesting design on the obverse, but on the reverse, it is also toned as well. As you saw with many of these examples, I think with almost all of them, a lot of them are going to be only toned on one side. And so the reason why I picked this one up is because not only does it have that interesting horseshoe design on the obverse with the toning, but when you take a look at the reverse, it also kind of has that rich kind of, kind of dark red to it. And when you take a, kind of a closer look, it has a few kind of textile dots right underneath the left wing. And that really drew me to the coin. And so stuff like that I just don't see every single day. I actually picked this one up this week, and I thought it was pretty cool. Now let's show you guys a few more coins before we exit this video today. We actually found a few more coins. Um, this one is an 1873 Open 3 Indian Head Scent. A little bit of a tougher date to find. And so offering Indian Head Scents is what we've been really trying to push because... There are a lot of people out there that like them, and I thought this one was pretty unique. Um, let's show you this, this one as well. Another 1864 copper nickel Indian head scent. Has kind of a little bit of, uh, a lot of brown on it, a little bit of red remaining. Uh, you kind of see a lot of brown, with, especially with circulated coins. None are really going to be red brown uh, for the most part. But interesting Civil War date there. And the last coin in this video is just an 1837 uh, cap bust. I thought this one just had enough eye appeal to pick it up and enjoy it. Didn't see anything distracting about it. Has a little bit of peripheral toning as well. But thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins today. Uh, let's talk about the current comps um, and how to find those. All right, so we just took a look at all those coins. A lot of great and interesting pieces. All have things that really bring up the value of the coin. And all just have different intricacies. And that's what... You really have to understand when you're buying a tone coin. Nothing is going to look like it exactly. Um, they all have their unique characteristics, and that's what really makes toning special. And so now we're going to actually take some time out of this video uh, just to wrap it up to show you guys great collections, what they offer, and how to check out uh, you know how to price certain coins. It's really going to be kind of an eye-opening experience if you've never seen tone coins being auctioned off. Uh, but let's cut to that video. We hope you guys enjoy that part. All right, so we're on the Great Collections homepage here, as you can see. Um, we're just going to scroll down and uh, check out the auction archives here. It's going to be all the way at the bottom. Basically, when that happens, we're going to go to the, the left side and check out Silver Dollars. That's just one of the ones we're going to look up. But when it finally loads, it's going to give you a drop-down menu of all the different dates you can look at. We're going to take a look at the common date here, 1881S, just to get you guys started on something. One that's probably the most prolific to tone. As you can see, there's keywords you can put in. 
I have one already uh, written down as tone. We're going to type that back in for you just so you get that step down. So it's uh, type in that word, press search. Now we can look at all the different images and grades for the 1881S Morgan Dollars. You can see one here. Uh, all of those are 68. All different types of toning progressions, everything that you normally see. Scroll down to 65 grades here. Um, you know, different colors, everything that you guys really can understand and sort of get a grasp on, different crescents, um, just different kind of levels of toning. Um, and then when you actually take a look, um, you know, there's actually a rattler sitting in there as well. But as you can see on the left side, there's, these are past comps. They've already happened. Uh, they happened in the past. But when you take a look on the right side, all of these are going to be the ones that are currently available for you to auction, um, actually bid on in the auction. So that's just something for you guys to understand. Um, very helpful website, especially if you're trying to get an understanding of toning and what to charge people for it. And if you guys don't want to do that yourself, just go over to greatcollections.com. It'll really be helpful for you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed that part of the video. Um, there's a lot of interesting things on the website. You know, what coins is sold for in certain conditions and if they're toned. It's a very good, useful place that you can check on uh, current comps for toned coins. And I, what I would say, though, uh, again, is to research, research, research understand as much as you can, ask as many dealers as you can about their opinions on toning. Everything is going to really compile um, into uh, your knowledge of the space, your knowledge of pricing. And that's what we were talking about in the four core that we were talking about earlier in the, current, in the past video. Your knowledge of the space is very important. Um, if you're not going to collect it, but you're going to resell it or coin deal it, what I would say is understand the space as much as you can and have the confidence to be able to move that coin before you buy it. That's something that's very important and that's something that should be understood um, after watching this video and after you do your research. But we hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like. Uh, we're trying to answer as many questions as possible in the comments down below. We would like to hear from you and subscribe if you're new. Uh, we wanna see you on this channel every single week interacting with everybody and just enjoying the videos, gaining more knowledge as well. But we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.